um, call to order this meeting of um, the uh, conference committee on House File 1938. Um, we have a document that represents a conference committee agreement um, on this on this spreadsheet. Um, we are going to go through it, and uh, it's tentative. Uh, uh, with regard to the, I'll speak louder. It's tentative with regard to there may be some additional adjustments that have to be made by the Department of, of Revenue um, for a final revenue estimate. So we're not voting on it tonight. Uh, we'll take that um, up tomorrow when we when we can. Okay, and then. Um, uh, but we want to go through it tonight because the agreement is is pretty well is pretty well set. Um, so we're going to ask um, uh, nonpartisan staff if they would help us take a chair up there and and go through it for us. And you can you can divide up the responsibilities any way you want. Madam Chair, my name is Cynthia Templin, House Fiscal Staff, and my colleagues uh, Michelle and Mr. Mom will be going through each each line of the spreadsheet. Uh, the spreadsheet before you actually is dated 6 p.m. I have an older version. <laughs> Just um, it's 6 p.m. in the upper right-hand corner. Um, starting on line three, tax revenues, lines four through line 14 are federal conformity provisions that were adopted in the conference committee previously. I will not go through those lines at this moment. Um, line 15 of the spreadsheet is the federal conformity to guilty with the 50% DRD and no section 250 deduction. This provision is effective tax year 23 and it is estimated to raise 437 million in 24 and 25 and 379.1 million in 26 and 27. Line 16 of the spreadsheet is for a standard itemized deduction phase out modifications. This is uh, has a 10% rate over 300 or over $304,000 and 20% over a million dollars. This provision is estimated to raise 354.3 million in 24 and 25 and 385.4 million in 26 and 27. Line 16 of the spreadsheet is a provision for reduced deductions for dividends received. This is at 50% and 40%. This is effective tax year 23, and it is estimated to raise 128.1 million in fiscal 24 and 25, and 111 million in 26 and 27. Line 18 of the spreadsheet is the net investment income tax provision. This is effective in tax year 24, and it is estimated to raise 86.2 million in 24 and 25, and 176.5 million in 26 and 27. And finally, on line 19, there is a corporate NOL provision that reduces the NOL from 80% to 70%. This is effective in tax year 24, and this is estimated to raise 22.5 million in 24 and 25, and 35.5 million in 26 and 27. The total um, estimated revenue increase is 1 billion, 33 million, 700 thousand in fiscal 24 and 25, and 1 billion, 172 million, 700 thousand in fiscal 26 and 27. Uh, thank you. Are there are there any uh, questions from the conferees? about uh, the numbers and or 
um, any explanation about why they are set at the way they are. Um, uh, Senator Weber. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I just I just have a couple of questions, and and I know that the guilty provision sort of gets into the weeds as far as tax law is concerned. Uh, but I was just wondering if we could have a very brief explanation of of what type of of income is covered uh, to generate this additional revenue. Ms. Templin. Uh, Madam Chair and Senator Weber, for that, um, I will turn to my colleague, um, Mr. Williams, who has the, the um, detail on the guilty income that is specifically affected. Uh, Chair, Chair Ress and Senator Weber, uh, I'm, I'm filling in for my colleague, Mr. Clayman, who's unable to be here tonight, so uh, I'm going to do my best, but um, my apologies for not having as much detail as he probably could provide. Um, kind of at a high level. My understanding of the guilty provision is that the TCJA sort of deemed um, the income of certain controlled foreign corporations um, to be domestic income under certain circumstances. And kind of at a high level, it's situations where um, uh, the amount of income earned by the controlled foreign corporation is high relative to the amount of tangible property that that corporation has. And so in those cases, that income has sort of been deemed to be uh, domestic income, sort of deemed to be uh, profits shifted overseas. And so it's included in the income uh, of the domestic kind of parent corporation. So that's maybe a high, high level description of what kind of income this is. Um, and then uh, under current law, this, this income would potentially be, we, we chose not to conform to this income as part of the uh, 2019 tax conformity bill. Um, but uh, the, the bill would treat this kind of income is a dividend. Um, under current law, the, the Minnesota dividend received deduction is either 80 or 70 percent, and the bill is also reducing for all corporations the dividend received deduction to uh, to 50 and 40 percent. So maybe that's that's a little bit of information for you. And I don't know if Ms. Pollock has anything she wants to add to what I provided there. Uh, Madam Chair, Ms. Pollock. Madam Chair, Senator Weber. Uh, no, I have nothing to add to Mr. Williams' comments. All right. And. Uh, one, one other question I have, and I, I visited with the Commissioner and uh, Ms. Bayer before. Um, as it relates to the net investment income, <clears throat> and it, 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 the line says excluding ag land sale gains, um, however, I believe that if we look, uh, what I, my question was, what about farmers when they sell their sell out, they have a full line of equipment, They're, they have a substantial capital gain in addition to, to farmland. Uh, or a small business person has uh, a large, whether it's a restaurant operation, something that's equipment intensive and they sell out. What, uh, what's the kind of issue does this cause for them? And, and I'd like, uh, like Ms. Bears to, to give the explanation here so that the public is maybe more clear as to what this means. Sure. Ms. Bears. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, Senator Weber, for the record, my name is Joanna Bears. I'm the Legislative Director for the Department of Revenue. Uh, net investment income uh, includes interest, dividends, annuities, royalties, and other gains not derived from trade or business. And it's on individuals, estates, and trusts. So, so I, I, my, my point, Madam Chair, is that, that the capital gains from the sale of the business, I think they should be safe from this provision. I th thank you for clarifying that. I think that's clear from what her statement yeah. was. Any other questions, comments? Um, then who, uh, who's going next? Mr. Mon. Uh, Madam Chair and members, Casey Mom, Senate Fiscal Analyst. <coughs> um, I'll be going through the individual income tax changes beginning on line 23, which is the child tax credit. It is a $1,750 credit per dependent, and it phases out um, at a rate of 12% um, above uh, $35,000 for married joint filers. It has a cost of uh, $794.5 million in the 24-25 biennium and $816.3 million in the 26-27 biennium. <clears throat> 
On line 24 is the one-time advanced refundable credit. It's an amount of 260 for a, a single filer and $520 for married joint filers, plus uh, $260 per child for a maximum credit of uh, $1,300. Um, administrative costs uh, to the Department of Revenue are included in the amount of one billion one hundred and fifty two million dollars. Mr. Uh, Mr. Mun, I have a question um, for um, Ms. Bayers. It, are the administrative costs um, included here in do they also re refer to like um, direct deposit of these re uh, these uh, uh, Repack, rebate checks or uh, mailing costs? What, what's involved in your administrative costs? Because it's quite considerable. Uh, Madam Chair, yes, uh, includes a third party um, in order to verify uh, account information. So when we're looking at sending these checks, we're using old return data uh, to identify the folks that are eligible for this payment. And then uh, we will contract with the third party who will then get updated banking information or open a portal so people can verify their information. And that way, uh, we're making sure that we're sending the payments to the right, right folks. And so uh, uh, the taxpayers will have an option to do a direct deposit uh, once we have the updated information or a check. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Moon. Uh, Madam Chair, the next change is on line 25. This is the Social Security subtraction uh, from the Senate's position. It's a cost of uh, $496.2 million and $576.8 million in the respective biennia. On 26 and 27 is the public pension subtraction. This was carried in both uh, the House and the Senate uh, and includes an interaction uh, between the Social Security subtraction. Um, on line 28 is the renter's income tax credit uh, proposal. Um, this was uh, carried in the House bill and the amounts shown here are the net uh, effect of um, uh, uh, the credit and the uh, repealing the refund. Uh, on line 29 is the child and dependent care credit, um, newborn credit for unmarried filers, carries a cost of $3.2 million for each biennium. Uh, on lines 30 and 31 are the K-12 education credit modifications. These are, um, uh, this was carried in the Senate bill. On line 32 is the angel tax credit reinstatement. This is um, being extended for um, two years at a cost of $5 million for each year, uh, $10 million total in fiscal 24 and 25. And line 33 is um, uh, working family credit expansion for ITIN filers. On line 34 is the increase to the political contribution refund. Line 35 is the beginning farmer tax credit. Um, it carries a cost of $4 million per year or $8 million for each biennium. On line 36 is a $2.8 million uh, per biennium cost for the short line railroad construction credit. This was in the Senate's bill. On line 37 is the manufactured home park credit uh, for sale of the parks to cooperatives. Um, on line 38 is uh, uh, the film credit. Uh, this is the uh, full amount that was um, uh, carried in uh, the, the House bill, um, but the uh, amounts in fiscal 24 and 25 um, reflect uh, the uh, amounts uh, uh, for the bill that as it was introduced. Um, on line 39 is uh, uh, subtraction for sexual harassment settlement income. On line 40 is a modification to the military tax credit due date. Uh, it has a cost of uh, $200,000 in fiscal 24 and 25. Um, line 41 is a house provision that uh, modifies discharge student loans. Uh, it carries a cost of $100,000 in details. On line 42 is uh, $10,000 uh, for uh, allowing uh, unemployment compensation received by uh, certain individuals in 2021 to be a subtraction. And on line 43 is uh, the PTE modification, um, which has a unknown uh, effect in both biennia. 
And on line 46 is a change to uh, the historic rehabilitation tax credit. Um, this is the um, uh, amount that was carried in the Senate's bill. Uh, Madam Chair and members, I me. will be covering. I, I need to ask if there are um, any questions about what, what um, about those um, um, provisions. Um, I, I believe um, the uh, the, deta the details of, because it has changed the details of the historic rehab tax credit. Um, I think the uh, transferability is only once, and I think in our bill it was twice. And um, and and there's a uh, the sunset still applies. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I will. We will continue with the sales tax exemptions on the spreadsheet. And starting, Ms. Templin, would you indicate where there is? A, um, because I know these were you know, uh, important suggestions um, from the House about which which of the, which have uh, the the sunsets and for how long. I think most of them are eight years, but if you would just indicate that, and you don't have to do it for every one. If you would just say lines. Five, six, seven, eight, or have an eight-year sunset or something. Thank you. Okay. She asked me for the individual income tax sunsets. Where they where they exist? The construction ones. Oh, they don't have that. But I'm just as we get through the rest of them, just to indicate if there's a sunset. Okay. Thank you, Madam Thank you. Chair. Just clarification: um, Are you looking for the sunsets uh, for the individual income tax provisions or the the remaining provisions? Um, well, either one. I'm, I think it's important to know, for people to know where there are sunsets and the ones we've already gone through. If you can identify them. Uh, okay. If not, it's okay either way. Um, in the individual income tax section, um, Madam Chair, the sunsets, um, the House had a sunset on the beginning farmer's tax credit, and I believe that was for eight years. And um, Madam Chair, um, my colleague, Mr. Williams, is looking, is, uh, has, has some information about that. I thought uh, there was one on the short line railroad, too. Is that true? Uh, Chair, Chair Rest, um, on the Shortline Railroad, I think that's the Senate provision, so I'll let, I'll let Senate Council speak to that. The, the Shortline Railroad is a Senate provision, so I'll let Senate Council speak okay. to that, that okay. issue. Madam, Ms. Madam Chair, um, uh, yes, the, the um, sunset provisions, um, I think, are a relatively um, um, uh, recent part of the, the agreement. And my understanding is that for the income tax provisions, the, um, as Ms. Templin indicated, the um, beginning farmer tax credit would have a sunset uh, after eight years beginning from 2023, as would the, um, the uh, short line railroad credit and the credit for sales of manufactured homes to cooperatives. Okay, thank you. And Madam Chair, the, to continue, I believe the film production credit also has a sunset. For eight years. Thank you. Um, moving, moving on, um, the uh, historic rehab uh, real, uh, tax credit, I believe, also has a sunset of eight years. And then that brings us to the sales tax section of the spreadsheet, starting on line 48. Um, the the agreement on this spreadsheet reflects um, individual standalone construction exemption projects, um, and each project is funded um, as a standalone project with specific um, dates um, for each project where the exemption is allowed. Um, um, to cover this at a very high level, there are construction exemptions on line 49 for Mazeppa, and this is for a fire-damaged property. This has a cost of 20000 in fiscal 24 and 25. 
Uh, the North Metro Range, there is a, an exemption funded in the bill at 290000 in fiscal 24 and 25. The city of Chanhassen has a project construction exemption project funded in the bill. This has a cost of 260000 in 24 and 25 and 520000 in 26 and 27. On page two of this spreadsheet, Chisholm Public Schools has a construction project um, exemption. This has an estimated cost of 840000 in 24 and 25. Line 53 of the spreadsheet, Duluth Public Schools. This has an estimated cost of 510000 in fiscal 24 and 25. Line 54 of the spreadsheet, the Edina Community Health and Safety Center. This has a, an estimated cost of 910000 in fiscal 26 and 27. Line 55 of the spreadsheet, Ely Public Schools. An estimated cost of 360000 in 24 and 25. Line 56 of the spreadsheet, Hibbing Public Schools. This has a cost of 260000 in 24 and 25. The uh, Minneapolis St. Paul Airport, the language um, for the construction exemption in, in the agreement is capped at $8 million a year. This has a cost of seven seven million five hundred and sixty thousand dollars in twenty four and twenty five. Um, if the legacy amounts are included, the total um, revenue reduction comes to eight million dollars for that provision. Line fifty eight of the spreadsheet is the city of Moorhead has a construction exemption project. The exemption and the estimated cost for that provision is. 240,000 in 24 and 25 and 480,000 in the tails. Line 59 of the spreadsheet is the Nashua Kewatin Public Schools. This has an estimated cost of 2.40 million in 24 and 25. Northern Lights Academy has a cost of 320,000 in 24 and 25. Line 61 of the spreadsheet, Northland Learning Center, $380,000 in 24 and 25. The city of Oakdale has a cost of 240000 in 24 and 25 and 500000 in the tails. Line 63, city of Ramsey, 700000 each biennia. Line 64 of the spreadsheet, Red Lake County School District, 400,000 in 24 and 25. Red Rock Central School District has a cost of 1,060,000 in 24 and 25. Line 66 of the spreadsheet has a cost of 3,050,000 in 24 and 25. Line 67 of the spreadsheet, City of Spring Grove, has a cost of 130000 in 24 and 25. Line 68 of the spreadsheet, Springfield School District, 740000 in 24 and 25. Line 69 of the spreadsheet, City of Wyzetta, has a cost, an estimated cost of $1,080,000 in 24 and 25. And finally, the Woodbury Central Park construction exemption project has a cost of 520000 each biennia. And that, um, that concludes the list of construction exemption projects. Are there any questions or comments about any of the items that were included? Okay, you can may continue. Uh, Madam Chair, beginning on line 73 are um, several other sales and use tax exemptions. Uh, line 73 is an exemption for sales, uh, certain sales to county fairs, cost of $60,000 million or $60, per biennium. Uh, line 74 is an exemption for firearm storage units at a cost of $40,000 per biennium. Line 75 is an exemption for the sale of disregarded single member entities. Line 76 is an exem exemption for suite licenses and amenities included with the admission to athletic events. Carries a cost of $2.74 million in fiscal 24 and 25 and $1.9 million in the tails. 
Uh, line 77 is an exemption for sales to blood, uh, nonprofit blood centers. It carries a cost of 1.7 million in 24-25 and 600,000 in the tails. Um, line 78 is uh, the Polar Vortex uh, natural gas fee um, exemption. It has a cost of $9.94 million in fiscal 24 and 25 and $3.69 million in the tails. Questions, comments? Continue. Um, on line uh, 80 begins several other revenue changes. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. The first is on line 81. Uh, it is a dedication of mortgage and deed tax to uh, the workforce de housing development account. It's a one-time dedication um, totaling $40 million in fiscal 24 and 25. On line 82 is uh, the combined net receipts rate reduction. These are um, reductions to the um, uh, charitable gambling tax rates uh, at a cost of $29.2 million and $32.7 million in the tails. Um, on line 83 is uh, the revenue reduction associated with repealing the $50 fee for entering into a payment agreement plan. Carries a cost of $3 million per biennium. On line 84 is the net uh, effect from the minerals article of uh, implementing the gross proceeds tax. Um, and on line 85 is uh, an amount um, that represents the cost of um, uh, uh, eliminating the interest on uh, construction um, uh, that, uh, for the city of Minneapolis. Um, it carries a cost of $12.344 million uh, in each biennium. Questions? No? Okay. Continue, Ms. Phil. Or Ms. Templin, either one. Good evening, Madam Chair. Kathy Schill, House Fiscal Staff. Um, we're turning to page three now. This is where we begin with the aids and credits portion of the spreadsheet. And a kind reminder that positive numbers here mean program spending as opposed to what we were just looking at were negative numbers were revenue um, losses. So right now we're looking at aid starting at line 91. Actually line 92 is a one-time public safety aid. This was a Senate item and you'll notice it's funded at 300 million in fiscal 24-25. The Senate had an additional $25 million for crisis intervention, and that has, is not included in this number. Uh, line 94 is Tribal Nations Aid, funded at $35 million in each year, starting in fiscal 25. If you remember, this was at $75 million in the House bill originally. Line 96 is an increase to LGA at 80 million per year. This is roughly double what the governor had and the Senate had proposed and 20 million less than what the House had originally. Please note that um, there will be adjustments for this, what we call interactions, uh, and so there will be some slight cost savings associated with this later reflected. And this particular provision does not include the Hibbing adjustment that was in the Senate bill. Line 97 is CPA, and once again, the increase mirrors that of LGA at $80 million per year. And once again, no interactions are included in this, this um, um, line. Line 98 is local government aid prepayment. We actually had this in the Senate bill. Uh, at $75 million. and in this particular version of the spreadsheet, it is at $68.3 million uh, payment in 24-25 and, and an equal cost savings in the tails. Moving down the spreadsheet, Morton and Echo, this is what we had uh, in each of the bills that was the same. Uh, similarly, Line 101 for Monoman County and City, this is a Senate provision and funded at 160,000 per year in the biennium beginning in fiscal 24. Uh, lines 102 through 108 are local grants. The first three that you see there for the city of Spring Grove, the city of Northfield, um, both of those were the same, uh, excuse me, 
The, the city of Spring Grove was the same in each of the bills. The city of Northville is what was included in the Senate provision at 300,000. Line 105 is Wyndham Relief at 14 million dollars in the first um, biennium. This is a new provision, but I believe the Senate had heard it uh, with Representative, uh, excuse me, Senator Weber's amendment. Uh, similar related to that is a new provision on 106. This is Crane Lake Watershed District Debt Service Relief. And as I understand it, it is associated also with the Wyndham Relief. Um, this is a public facilities authority um, debt service uh, at slightly less than $1.3 million in 24 and 25. The next two items are appropriations for the city of Minneapolis. The first is Hiawatha campus holding costs at $2 million. And then in line 108, city of Minneapolis, Lake Street rebuilding at $8 million. Those are uh, one-time payments. Line 110 is payment in lieu of taxes. Or, and you'll see that it is the house provision that is the same with what the house had. Line 111 is uh, SWCD aid. Um, each bill had different versions of this, and this is the compromise at $30 million in 2425 and $24 million in 26 and 27. Lines 112 and 113 reflect um, electric utility transition aid. That was the same in both bills. And then uh, the associated um, repeal of the utility valuation transition aid. This is the House's version of that repeal. Lines 115 is local homeless prevention aid. The House bill had an appropriation for this. It is not carried here. However, the associated 12% tribal nations earmark um, is still, it still remains, and there's a note on the spreadsheet for that. Line 116 is uh, what the House had originally called local affordable homeless aid. It's gone through a slight um, retitling um, in associate, so it would pair well with um, provisions that were already passed in the housing bill. Um, that aid is funded at 45 million in 24 and 25, and 20 million in 26 and 27. If there are no questions, property tax refunds. Um, um, Representative Davids. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I may have misheard something on line 105, a Wyndham relief, which I'm totally supporting, but. I think you said 1.4 million, or am I just hearing bad? Is it 14 million? It's 14 million. It's 14 okay. million. Um, Thank you. Thank you, um, sure. Representative Davis. Moving to property tax refunds on lines 118 through 125. Um, let's start with 119. This is the I 10 uh, expansion of homestead status. That's the same in each of the bills, funded at $2 million beginning in uh, fiscal 25, $2 million per year. Uh, line 120 is Homestead Credit State Refund. This is copay at 3%. The House bill originally had it at 5%. The 3% um, cost would be $25.4 million in 24-25 and $51.6 million in 26 and 27. Lines 21 and 22 are the one-time payment for homeowner PTR and renter PTR. This originally in the House bill was at 13.8%. It is, it's received an, a bump here, uh, 130.8 million in 24-25 for homeowners, 44 point, almost 5 million for the renters. And when you add that together with the next line, the targeting PTR one-time payment for fiscal 24, 23.3 million, when you add those three together, you are just under $200 million for those one-time payments. And then finally, on 125, the enhanced tech, taxpayer assistance, including PTR and working family credit, this is funded at uh, 1 million per year. Uh, so 2 million in 24 and 25, 2 million in 26 and 27. 
to get the word out to help, especially with those one-time payments. Um, <clears throat> um, if there are no questions, I'll move on to um, uh, the next section of changes, beginning with line 128. Uh, this is a modification to the homestead market value exclusion. Uh, and it actually reduces property tax refunds in fiscal 26 and 27 by $12.16 million. Um, on line 129 in, uh, through 131 are changes uh, related to the um, class four classification of 4D properties. Um, on line 132 is uh, an exemption for the St. Anne Senior Residence in Duluth. Um, on line 133 is uh, an exemption for a tribal-owned uh, parcel in Minneapolis. Um, this includes um, an amount uh, affecting the commercial industrial levy, $10,000. Um, on line 134 is a change uh, to the classification for uh, properties with solar energy systems. This was the Senate uh, version of the language. Um, on line 136 is a uh, modification of um, the uh, Green Acres uh, program eligibility. It carries a negligible uh, if effect in uh, the tails. On line 137 is um, a modification to the spousal, uh, uh, disabled veteran spousal market value exclusion. Um, this would be the house's uh, language that had... Um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, uh, uh, lengthier eligibility um, reach back. Um, on line 141 is a uh, change to the uh, first tier valuation of agricultural homesteads. Um, on line 143 um, is a, uh, these are the uh, interactions with uh, property tax re refunds and income deductions for uh, modifications to the um, levy authority of watershed districts. And on line 144 is a property tax exemption for um, a school district um, in Stearns County. Um, pause for changes or uh, questions. Madam Chair. I'm sorry, Senator Weber. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> um, I noticed the, the homestead market value exclusion for residential and agricultural properties, which I'm very appreciative of. Uh, we also had had a provision for our, our resort homesteads, which was, a, a, I think, a $20 million plus number. Uh, I was just wondering what the, what the issue may have been surrounding that not being included. Representative Gomez or Representative Lissagard, either one. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair, and uh, and thank you, Senator Weber. I think, as we said earlier, we were really focused on not doing shifts in property taxes as much as possible. We did do some, which you'll note I resisted kind of mightily, um, but that's basically the reason. I don't know if the chair had anything to add. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yep, I will just confirm uh, what Chair Gomez said. That was the focus um, with uh, rising property taxes. We tried to eliminate as many shifts as possible. So, and Madam Chair, I would just mention that that in putting that together, we had visited with some local um, officials from counties in, in, in northern county uh, counties that have considerable resort property. And it was an issue that was was not of uh, a concern to them from the standpoint that they recognized the great strain that our family res run resorts are under these days. And uh, and I think uh, this was one way that we could provide them some assistance. Representative Lisa Garn. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Senator Weber, I, I would agree, but I would also think that, you know, the elderly people and people across the the state of Minnesota are, are being uh, taxed out of their homes when it comes to property taxes, and that's why we really push back on uh, any shifts. So, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you both. Um, who's next? 
Madam Chair, continuing down the spreadsheet, uh, lines 146 um, on page three and continuing on to the following page is uh, all the other changes associated with aids and credits. Line 148 is the solid waste tax distribution to score grants. This was originally at 5% in the House bill. This is, uh, it's been lowered to 3% with a cost of 6.9 million in 24, 25 and 7.3 million in 26 and 27. Line 51, disallow revenue recapture. This was a provision in the House bill and that is what was accepted here. Uh, Line 152 is a new item, IRS tax filing modernization account established at $5 million one time uh, in fiscal 24 and 25. Line 153, the free file report. This was Representative Joachim's bill, I believe, uh, reflected in the House bill, uh, and it's at 175 one time. Um, line 154 is taxpayer receipt, a favorite of certain House members. Uh, file. Uh, um, funded at 191,000 in uh, 24 and 25 and 94,000 in 26, 27. Uh, line 155 is interaction impact with the combined net receipts uh, problem gambling. It's a slightly um, a slight change reflected here with res respect to other items that we have already heard about stadium funding. And then line 156 is a uh, senior deferral item. Um, this was the same in each of the House and Senate bill. Um, you can see the cost of one, uh, excuse me, 260,000 in 24 and 25 and 1.3 million in 26 and 27. Line 157 is a new item. Teachers retirement aid, um, school pension adjustment aid and this Item has a note saying this adjustment, uh, there might be a slight adjustment to this number, funded at 97.4 million in fiscal 26 and 27. And then finally on one, line 163 is the administration of the tax act, um, administration for department of administration, uh, excuse me, department of revenue, uh, funded at $3 million in each biennium. Line 165 shows the total expenditure items of 919,056,000, and then in 2627, 554,836,000. Uh, line 172 shows the targets, and we made it there. And this concludes the presentation of the spreadsheet. Thank you, Ms. Thel. <clears throat> I would like to go back to um, just. Um, having um, um, the commissioner or Ms. Bears explain the um, IRS tax filing modernization, modernization account being established and um, how, those, how you see those funds being used. And if you don't use them all in, in that year, what happens to them? Thank you, Madam Chair. Paul Marquardt, the Commissioner of Revenue. And first of all, uh, Madam Chair and Madam Chair, thank you so much for allowing the Department of Revenue, myself and Ms. Bears and the Governor to be part of these discussions over the last uh, week or so. Appreciate that very, very much. So uh, you might have seen an article that came out just a couple days ago, is that part of the Inflation Reduction Act, uh, that act provided a lot of extra money for the IRS. And part of those dollars that went to the IRS was to look at the federal IRS to do a free filing where people would actually go through the IRS and on filing and so forth. Uh, and in that article, they're, they're developing kind of a prototype and they've got a pilot program that is going to start, I believe, in January of 24. I don't know how extensive that's going to be, but it's going to be a pilot program. Right now, if the federal government went with this system full blowing, uh, we don't have the capabilities through our gen tax system right now at the state of Minnesota to link up with that new system. So what would have to happen, Madam Chair, is that a person would have to, if they're free filing there, file a federal uh, return and then file a separate Minnesota return. So. This would allow the department to start looking at 
uh, how we would deal with this if this occurs. And in fact, if it does, this five million would not cover the cost of a new system, to be quite clear. Uh, and if these dollars are not used, uh, they would um, drop down into the VITA sites and uh, be used for that. So it's really to look ahead and prepare the federal government goes to this, IRS goes to their free filing. Okay, thank you. Thank you, um, um, Commissioner. Um, I think in, uh, other than some uh, comments about the uh, spreadsheet, uh, we will, we still need um, uh, changes and reflections so we can't adopt it um, uh, this evening. And uh, but certainly we can discuss what's what's in here, and um, I, uh, uh, I for one, am very pleased with the amount of, of tax relief that we are providing to Minnesota uh, taxpayers, and um, I, I think it's um, unusual, actually, for a bill to be put together like this and that reflects. Um, uh, the priorities of all three um, groups that are um, that are involved in this. I mean, certainly, the and you were mentioning um, uh, Representative Leslie Gard and Representative Gomez. The the uh, focus uh, in um, uh, for the House on property tax relief, and I think that um, uh, that's going to end up being a um, uh, something for which many Minnesotans are grateful for because property taxes, at least in, in uh, many areas of the state, are, um, are rising um, at, a, at a rate that um, is very concerning to, uh, to most of us. Um, and I appreciate uh, from the governor, particularly a child tax credit, I think that is, that is going to be a... Uh, uh, you know, kind of a stored item um, for um, uh, for um, for the um, for the Senate, as well as the uh, Social Security uh, subtractions, and we appreciate the move that was made by <coughs> the House toward the uh, the level of phase out that that we have. Um, we. Um, we appreciate um, also uh, the uh, acceptance and working toward over a period of time as we were in this conference committee the um, the public safety the public safety aid which was a joint agreement um, and worked on by Senator Gustafson and and uh, Senator Latz and uh, and my representative representative um, representative Fraser. Um, and um, we appreciate the um, the um, uh, um, sales tax exemptions that that are in here that recognize the burden that that poses on local governments, um, and um, uh, uh, as they uh, struggle in these days to to um, uh, uh, to keep their cities. Um, uh, vibrant and and modern as as they um, as they can be, um, and I mean I look through all of these and I guess I could go back line by line almost and, and say what I think is good about, them. Um, but um, I uh, really appreciated um, being able to uh, work at probably um, fairly unusual. Um, uh, relationship, but but we got it done, Representative Gomez, and we don't have to be like like others in order to get a good product here. And I do appreciate that uh, your willingness to um, respect my my um, desires for having the conversations that we did in public. I think I think the public uh, needs to hear legislators talking, not arguing. <laughs> um, are not uh, not trying to make political points, but actually talking about about the process and and about how the process informs the results. 
and I think that the, our process has led to um, extraordinary document to um, uh, that will um, uh, speak to the benefit of Minnesota taxpayers and and all Minnesota residents. Um, and um, I'm um, I'm pleased with it. I thank the governor. I thank you, Representative Gomez, members of the House of Representatives, and. Um, uh, and the contraries that are here. We do need to meet again, of course, so this is not exactly a final speech. It's kind of a practice, a practice final speech. Um, but um, uh, Representative Gomez will have the gavel tomorrow. But um, Representative Davids, did you want to make a statement? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Just, I've got a couple of questions on a couple of things here. I'll be okay. very brief. That's okay. Uh, line 46, Historic Rehabilitation Tax Credit Reinstatement. Uh, I want to thank the Senate for that. Uh, who was the author of that this year? In Senator Dietzik. Dietzik, and was last year was it Senator Nelson, or two years ago? Many years ago, not two years ago. Okay. Many years. Well, I, I want to thank Senator Nelson for her work on this and Leader Dietzik. I think that's very important. I think we'll see great dividends from that. Um, didn't have a whole lot to say about the revenue enhancers. Um, I think you probably know what my comments would have been on that in the first place. Sure. So that's, uh, I wish, I do kind of wish that business could have had a little more uh, input on that maybe, but but I understand my lot in life. A um, couple questions. Do we have a list of the local option sales taxes? Will that be provided, Madam Chair? The, I'm not sure. Uh, Representative Davis, I'm not sure I understand what you mean. Yeah, with the local option sales tax, do we have a list of what cities were approved? Uh, yeah, no, I know. I I thought in a um, uh, they're listed in the side by side, and um, I think I think they're all, all around there. I think they're twenty five. They're twenty five projects that are there. Oh, I understand. Um, I Madam Chair, just to quickly give maybe a are list. You, are you asking about Rochester? No, no I'm not oh, going okay. there. Uh, All right. <laughs> well, I was just wondering. There's there's 25, and if you, um, I'm trying to think of which which uh, document would have listed them. I I think one of them, uh, uh, Ms. Pollock is going to help us. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, uh, Madam Chair, yeah. Representative Davids, uh, we don't have a, a list um, of the cities listed individually, but I'll be happy to put that together for the conference committee tomorrow just so you can see all of the cities. Um, I, I, I believe all the cities that were in the Senate article um, are uh, ex have been accepted. Okay, if, if you get a list of that, I, I, can, sure, I know it's not on the spreadsheet because it's not a cost item, I understand that, but I'd, I'd like to see that list if possible. Uh, and then... So it also, isn't there like a, I was hearing, I, I don't see it, a moratorium on local option sales tax for two years? That has, um, that is my proposal. Uh, since it's not a, a fiscal thing, um, has no fiscal impact on this, on the spreadsheet, um, it's in the language, um, but it's not here. And yes, that is, um, that is the case. And Representative Gomez has accepted it. Okay, I, I was thinking if we could make amendments, I'd propose a two-week moratorium, maybe. I'm, <laughs> Just, I'm not making any proposal. No, um, <laughs> where are we on the e-poll tabs? I see that we reduced the tax, but the issue of the e-poll tabs, did we take the Senate language that there was none of, or did we combine with some? How, where are we on the e-poll tab issue? Um, the um, e-poll tab issue is um, dealt with in the same article as the um, stadiums. It's reflected here on the Fred sheet separately. Um, and uh, there is, we're not, we don't have the language in front of us, right? We, there is language, but there's still um, some, uh, you know, minor kinds of changes and so forth so that we do we're not publishing that language tonight until everything is final okay can we have like a hint as to where we're headed here um, because I mean I love the Senate language because it did nothing and I'm probably the champion of the world of being able to do nothing <laughs> and and so I, I appreciate that and 
not to counter my house counterparts here, but I really am hoping we just kind of leave that whole thing alone uh, the way it is um, because we're going to have a lot of bar owners and restaurant owners that are not going to be very pleased with us if we mess with that. Just a thought. Um, at this point, Representative Davids, are, there are some changes made in the pool tabs, and but then there is considerable uh, pro, um, uh, <clears throat> tax relief for the um, service organizations and the charities uh, in that same article. And, and thank you, Madam Chair, for that. I, I just kind of like to know how is it offset because anytime you start messing with that, the, the uh, bars and restaurants go out of their minds. Um, we don't want to be premature with the exact language at this point, uh, except to say that there is pull tab language, changes in the pull tabs, and then there's uh, considerable, uh, pro I keep calling it property tax, considerable tax relief. But we want to make sure that when it that language is released, that it is uh, final. And, and I, I really do appreciate that. And just one comment, and then I will, I won't go away, Matt, I'll just go away. Um, you know, we, we hear from, in press conferences and so forth, this is the biggest tax reduction in history, but we must also let the record reflect it's also the largest tax increase in history, too. Uh, so I think, you know, we need to be a little bit about both sides. Or yes, you, I mean, you've got some great tax relief in here. You really, really do. And I appreciate Chair Gomez and, and Chair Rest on some things you've done in here. But it's also the largest tax increase. Now, not just, not just maybe the tax part, but also education, transportation. Uh, people in Minnesota are going to get hit with some pretty uh, hefty tax increases. That being said, um, I, I really think, and this is not my final speech. I'll talk tomorrow, too. But I really thank Chair Gomez, and I really thank you, Chair Rest, and I really thank you, Commissioner Marquardt, uh, for what you've been able to do here. Um, with, you know, like I think I told Chair Gomez the other, or I just visiting quickly, and I just said, you know, this would be a really super good bill if it didn't have all the revenue enhancers. So, but I, I, I get it. So thank you, Madam Chair. Absolutely. Well, you know, um, um, Representative, we had an extraordinary opportunity here to um, focus on um, families and children uh, across this this wonderful state and um, we provided a significant um, a relief in doing that but we also recognize that there are um, some of these investments that we're making um, we need to be partners um, uh, across the state in accepting responsibility for the benefits that we are bringing and um, I uh, and and this is this is the picture you get uh, for doing that and I'm um, I'm extremely proud of this bill representing Gomez would you do you want to comment and maybe if you if you want to talk about what, uh, what where we'll be tomorrow Great. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Chair Rest. This is my, my pre-last uh, speech, too, apparently. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I think um, just to s start at the last question, um, I will maybe we'll kind of uh, decide about how to proceed tomorrow together. I, I sure. feel like, it, and yeah, just, on um, that. It, uh, it's your choice yes. of how we do that is what I was trying to indicate. Yeah. Uh, not mine. In, in fact, I'm... I'm happy to give it to you. <laughs> Great. Um, yeah, so, you know, I, I, I want to echo a lot of what, um, what the chair said. Uh, I think that um, there are just really incredible transformational things in this bill that will benefit people across our state, and we've been talking about them over the last couple weeks. And, um, and I want to just compliment and thank you for your insistence on us doing this in public. I think it's been really wonderful, and I have enjoyed it, and I've learned things. And, um, and you know, some people who've been around here longer than I have have come up to me and taught and said, this is just, it's refreshing to have us exchanging offers in public, exchanging information in public. And I'm glad that we could demonstrate that um, there's nothing wrong that happened, right, it, with us uh, coming out and, and, and uh, proceeding in this way. And so I want to thank you for that. Um, 
because I wasn't sure at first. It was kind of like we were like, oh, what's it going to be like? So, I, so um, yeah, thank you for that. Um, you know, I think we've been talking together over the last few weeks and last few months about all the great things that are in this bill. I mean, we have this incredible um, child tax credit from the governor um, that will significantly cut child poverty, and that is the right thing to do because in a state like Minnesota, I think we should all just come together and say that no child should live in poverty, period. Um, and this moves us toward that, and it reflects our shared commitment to the children of this state, to the families of this state, that we know uh, both the chairs and our, our members, our, our leadership, our governor, our commissioner, all share in common. Um, you know, the renter's credit is huge. I know so many people have been working on this for years, including you, you. Uh, Madam Chair, and including the commissioner. And um, so that's a really exciting thing to get done. Um, the property tax refunds are great. I am just want to compliment Dave Lissagard. Um, I think that I am so proud of the property tax division report, which you see right here, basically in its entirety, because Chair Liz Lagarde um, set out in his division that he was going to renew our commitment and our partnership with our local government partners, that we were going to provide significant ongoing property, property tax refunds to people who needed them. Um, and, you know, that's all reflected here, and I think that's a really important body of work, and I thank him for that and for his partnership. Um, I'm, I'm really thankful, Madam Chair, for the partnership on the tribal aid ongoing. Absolutely. Thank you so much. You know, that's another piece that is, to me, a, a transformational piece that we got to do together, and so I thank you for that. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, there's a lot of great things in this bill, and um, the hour's late, and so I'm going to wrap up, but I do just want to um, thank, again, uh, our incredible staff who have been uh, working around the clock. I always, you know, I've been on the tax committee for the last, uh, since I joined the legislature, and so always knew, could observe um, their talent and brilliance and dedication to the people of our state. Uh, but, you know, seeing it up close is kind of something else. And so I'm deeply thankful to each of you um, for all that you've done. And it's, it's like so strange to see this little list and think of all of the hours and hours and, uh, that was poured into it. So, uh, yeah, here we are. Thank you so much um, to my conferees and to my members and to Representative Davids for being uh, wonderful to me for being a teacher to me and for uh, for helping me out and taking it easy on me and joking around with me. So, um, Representatives Lee and Agbaje and Representative Norris, our sixth man, thank you for all the hours of work. Sean Haydorn, Patrick <coughs> McQuillan, thank you for holding us together. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. Um, uh, We'll make our final speeches tomorrow about, about this bill. Uh, but um, you can never uh, thank the people who um, who help us. Um, uh, we try to do uh, do good work, and and um, they're wonderful in making us look good and trying to do that work. Um, people now will have an opportunity to see this the spreadsheet. Um, and um, when we um, come back at your schedule tomorrow, um, we are likely to have more questions because not everybody has seen every, every um, item. And so um, uh, it won't just be a performer adopting of something. We're, we are going to continue with more questions. But um, uh, uh, we'll, we can do that tomorrow. It's that's okay, and and give out more information about some of the items that are in it, including the um, uh, representative David's asking about the moratorium language. Um, I think it's very important that that uh, we take a pause and um, we uh, 
uh, are not making any general law changes in this bill, but there will be an opportunity for us to really look at the place that, of the local sales taxes. Um, I make people pay a quarter every time they use the phrase local option sales tax. Uh, that was changed years ago. And um, I have a quarter jar. That you have to, you know, right there you go. <laughs> and, uh, and we can, uh, oh, wow. <laughs> that, that looks like a state dinner or something. <laughs> uh, um, um, we're also um, uh, very happy um, about the, the way in which we were work to, able to work together on the the uh, tax and government financing um, statutes that has been, uh, you know, a favorite area of mine, and uh, uh, it's kind of just part of my internal system, I guess, to to um, pay attention to it and to be to be um, uh, a champion of the um, uh, of this one singular. Um, tool that is available for economic development um, across across the spectrum um, of uh, <clears throat> of cities to um, for their um, for their own uh, well being. So appreciate um, the work uh, that you've done to um, uh, uh, in response to the article, the TIF article, and, and particularly, um, I could talk a long time about tax policy right here, but, but particularly the article that's in here from the state auditor's office. It's just superb in the work that they've done that, that went into last year's bill. Um, in fact, there are a number of, of um, policy issues in, in this bill that were in front of us last year when, when um, our good friend um, Senator Nelson was chair of the of the Senate Tax Committee, and I'm glad to see that that a number of them uh, returned to be a part of this bill. And one of those is certainly the the um, the report from the um, from the um, uh, state auditor's office on general law uh, tax increment financing. Uh, changes. So, so I think we're then done for um, this evening. Um, we'll have questions and comments again tomorrow, um, and uh, uh, we'll wait for word from uh, Representative Gomez's office about when we will reconvene. So we stand adjourned. Thanks.